just last night before I boarded an airplane from Mumbai, India. I was at a program with His Holiness Jai Patak Swami Maharaj. I'd like to say something about him. Just to show how the spirit of Srila Prabhupada has so much infused the lives of many of those devotees who love him. In October, he was stroked by the merciful hand of Krishna with a stroke. in the section of the brain called the brain stem. Recently, or a couple months ago, a neurosurgeon from America, one of the top, said anyone who has the type of stroke that he has, he said, I've never seen anyone survive. In fact, Jaipatak Maharaj's own doctor said there was not even 1% chance that he could possibly live. And if he does, nobody knows what condition he could be. But somehow or other, he's alive. <laughs> and not only is he alive, but he's so eager to share Krishna consciousness with others. Not long after he came out of critical condition, I was just coming from Delhi, and I was in a car from the Bombay airport to our temple, Radha Gopinath Temple, and I got a phone call, and it was somebody from Bhaktivedanta Hospital who said, Jai Patak Maharaj is wondering if he could come two Sundays from now to give the Sunday lecture. <laughs> and I said, of course, we would be most honored to have him. And then I decided to tell a joke. <laughs> I got on the phone with him and I, he asked if he could come and I said, we'd love to have you. And then I told this joke. I said, in fact, that's two Sundays from now, but next Sunday is our Pune Yatra. There'll be 4,500 people there. Why don't you give the Sunday lecture there too? <laughs> and he started laughing really hard. So I thought it was a good joke. <laughs> but then after he laughed for real hard and, uh, and I heard everybody in the room with him laughing also very hard then he said do you really want me to come? <laughs> I said Maharaj whatever is good for your health and he said, 4,500 devotees will be there? I said, yes. And then we changed the subject. And we were talking some other things. And then he interrupted and he said, how far is Pune? <laughs> I said, it's about four hours each way. That means eight hours round trip. He said, that's too far. I said, I think it's too far. And we talked about some other things. And then he interrupted again. He said, the doctors would never allow me to do that. <laughs> so I said, I don't think so either. And we kept talking. And then he said, 
But the doctors are your followers. If you tell them I should go, <laughs> then they have to let me go. And I said, Maharaj, whatever is best for your health is the only consideration. So I never said anything to anyone. And that was the end. But then the day before I was leaving for the Pune Yatra, the director of Bhaktivedanta Hospital called me on the phone. He said, ever since that phone call, every day he's pushing us <laughs> to let him go to the Pune Yatra. And he said, he said all of his, in his caretakers and all of the local doctors are all telling him it's not good for his health. He should not go, but he keeps pushing. So finally, just to end, this, to just end the matter, we, we went to the senior most neurosurgeon who was handling his case and said, whatever he says, you know, we have to accept. So they asked the senior most neurosurgeon, if he can take this eight-hour drive, Pune and back, and preach to 4,500 devotees when he's still in a wheelchair and he's still really very, very incapacitated. And the doctor said, he shocked everyone. He said, that will be the best thing for him. <laughs> And the doctors asked, why? How is it the best thing for him? <laughs> he said, because what's, what's going to help him heal the most is if he's happy. And he's a saint. He's a preacher. What makes him happy is giving Krishna to others. And this doctor is not a devotee. He's not a devotee at all. He said, what makes him happy is giving Krishna to others, giving bhakti to others. So if this makes him happy, this is what will be good for him. This is Srila Prabhupada's spirit. Paradukaduki. A devotee's happiness is seeing other people happy. And real happiness is seeing other people receiving Krishna, loving Krishna. Bhaktivinoda Thakur wrote one prayer where he explains, what is that, there's a song about Narada Muni, where he's talking about how Narada Muni is making everybody chant and everyone dance and everyone loving Krishna and everyone's chanting. And he said, when that day comes, that will be my happiness to see everyone chanting the holy names, everyone with tears of love of God in their eyes, that will be my happiness. To give Krishna to others. So then he actually came. They had to make this whole... They brought him in the back of an ambulance through all the Bombay traffic, the Bombay Pune Highway, all the way to the Muffetlau bungalow in Pune. He came there, he got there at night, spoke. Then the next morning, he gave a one and a half hour Srimad Bhagavatam class. And he's on a wheelchair. Most of his body doesn't work. His speech is really like especially at that time he couldn't speak very well he could only every sentence he would speak somebody who who kind of understood him had to repeat him so that we could understand him and that you know there were like fluids and liquids coming out of different parts of his face and there had to be always somebody wiping him and spraying water in his mouth because it was dry and it really was it, it, for any person, it would be really an embarrassing situation to sit in front of almost 5,000 people in that state with people wiping you and spraying and picking you up. And <clears throat> but he was absolutely oblivious to, to, to all that. He was just completely blissful to talk about Krishna. 
I remember I, years ago I went to see one of Prabhupada's godbrothers who was in his late 90s. He was laying on a bed and his disciples said, nobody's allowed to see him because he can't, you know, he's very sick and very indisposed. But he, they said, but he wants, to, he said he'll, he's happy to see you. So I came in with a few other devotees and he was just laying there and he spoke Krishna Kata for three hours to us. <laughs> Till late at night. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. This is how he imbibed that spirit of giving Krishna to others and his disciples. Srila Prabhupada, after heart attacks, after strokes, after so many situations, wandering around the world 14 times. And we've all seen that video where he's in his last days in Vrindavan laying in bed and His Holiness Jayadoyta Maharaj has a dictaphone to his mouth and he's dictating purports to Srimad Bhagavatam. The spirit of compassion of the Vaishnava is, is so deep and so sublime. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu he took sannyas just so that he could give Krishna to the people who were the most proud and the most envious you were listening to Radhanath Swami on devotionalnectar.com <laughs>